Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This presentation brings to you the classification of phylum Echinodermata. In the previous presentation, we looked into the characteristic features of phylum Echinodermata. Uh, the classification which we are going to follow is the one uh, given by Rupert, outlined by Rupert and Barnes in uh, 1994. And here, the phylum Echinodermata was divided into three subphyla. You see here. Crinozoa, the Astrozoa, and Echinozoa. Uh, the Crinozoa, it is, the subphylum Crinozoa, is, uh, includes the class Crinoidea. Uh, it includes uh, the sea lilies and sea fetters. Here you can see the uh, member coming under, uh, how a member coming under Crinoidea looks like. Okay, so you can see they are, they include both extinct and uh, extent that is the living echinoderms and they are popularly known as sea lilies sea feathers or feather stars okay uh, we can see the sea lilies they are sessile forms that is they are found attached to, to some substratum uh, while sea feathers they are swimming free swimming forms okay now coming to the next one the subphylum asterozoa it includes two classes the class of heroidea uh, which includes uh, uh, the little stars, basket stars, or serpent stars, while Asteroidea, it includes the starfishes. So we, here you can see the uh, Ophiroidea, and the, here it shows the Asteroidea. Okay, so as uh, the Ophiroidea, it includes, as already mentioned, the basket stars, brittle stars, or serpent stars, because it uh, the members do have branched arms, and uh, almost uh, they uh, they have basket star the name has come because of they uh, they have branched arms brittle stars it denotes a fragile and easily breakable arms okay. and uh, then we have the asteroidia they are almost flat and free swimming uh, I mean free living echinoderms and they are popularly known as starfishes or sea stars okay now subphylum echinozoa it includes two classes echinoidea and holothraidea echinoidea the class echinoidea it includes sea urchins heart urchins cake urchins and sand dollars and uh, uh, here you can see the sea urchin here the holothraidea it uh, includes sea cucumbers so here you can see the sea cucumbers uh, it is almost cylindrical echinoderms and uh, here we have the five uh, classes that includes living echinoderms. Okay, almost about 7,000 species of echinodermates are uh, discovered, uh, plus, like almost twice that number of uh, extinct forms ex uh, are already uh, discovered. Okay, so these include the uh, living groups. Now, when you look into the uh, features uh, along the phylogenetic uh, perspective, you can see here. The ancestors of Echinodermata, they had their exoskeletal plates with stereome structure, the external ciliary groups for suspension feeding, and such ancestors gave rise to the class Homalozoa, and these include only the extinct organisms, the extinct echinoderms. Okay, then we had the ancestors. Uh, those ancestors which had lost the gills, even with the uh, what you call aquatic mode of life, they had lost the gills. They developed water vascular system. They developed ambulacral groups. So those ancestors with all these characters, they evolved into what you call as helicoplacoidea, which had the spirally arranged ossicles and lateral mouth. Again, this helicoplacoidea is also a class with extinct forms. Okay. Echinodermata were divided into two subphyla, Palmatozoa and Eleutherozoa, in uh, an earlier classification. But later, the uh, present classification, which is widely accepted as per Rupert and Barnes, it divides Echinodermata into three subphyla. Okay. But in this particular picture, you can see it is Palmatozoa and Eleutherozoa. It, they, they were the subphyla coming under the phylum Echinodermata as per the earlier classification. Okay. So we'll continue with that. Now the uh, ancestor which had the which had developed ambulacral grooves and vascular system, 
later developed the pentaradial symmetry. Okay, and they also uh, developed uh, the what you call the open ampullary group groups. Okay, so these ancestors having character, the, these characters actually, they uh, some of them they evolved into the crinoidea. Okay, the uh, uh, living echinoderms they are coming under these classes. Okay, so the crinoidea. The crinoidea they had lo the lost external madreporite. Uh, they have arms with open ampullary groups for suspension feeding. Okay, but now the ancestors of these, they later developed uh, oral surface against the substratum. They developed suckers on the podia and they developed madriparite on the oral surface. Okay, so those ancestors having uh, madriparite on the oral surface uh, and uh, oral surface close to the substratum with open uh, ambulacral grooves and then pentaradial symmetry, they evolved into the asteroidia. Okay, asteroidia, which includes the star fishes and sea stars, they had five arms broadly connected to the central disk. Okay, now this, the ancestors to the asteroidia, they later evolved in, uh, developed closed ambulacral grooves. Okay, in the case of asteroidia also, we can see the um, ambulacral grooves are open, right. Here they developed uh, closed ambulacral grooves later and those ancestors later uh, like gave rise to two uh, descendants stock. The one of them it developed into ophiroidea, uh, and in the uh, in those members you can see the podial suckers have been lost. Madriparite moved to the oral surface, and arms with highly articulated vertebrae. Okay, they had a highly uh, flexible or we can say highly movable arms. Then the second stalk, it developed a barrel surface reduced to region around the anus, the extension of ampullary grooves from oral to a barrel pole. And though these ancestors, the ancestors with these characters, uh, they developed into two groups. One of them evolved into echinoidea and the second one developed into holothuroidea. Okay. The echinoidea, they developed a fusion of skeletal ossicles to form rigid test, that is outer covering in most of them. And then the holothuroidea, they evolved from ancestors with uh, elongated oral aboral axis and internal madriporite and ossicles reduced. Okay, so they developed into holothuroidea. So in this uh, figure itself, we can see which is the most re recent one, they are it's a, Echinoidea and holothuroidea, right? And which is the most primitive one among the living ones? It is the most ancient one, is the crinoidea. Okay, we can also find all the characters that is a holothuroidea, they had reduced ossicles, internal madriparite, and oral aboral axis elongated, right? While echinoidea, they had skeletal ossicles fused to form a rigid covering over the body. They also have extension of ambulacral groups from oral to aboral pole. And a bottle surface, it is reduced to region just around the anal opening. Okay. Now, what about a furoidea? A furoidea, they had lost the pod podial suckers. And uh, uh, the madriparite, it uh, moved to the oral surface. Unlike the, um, what you call the asteroidea, they have the uh, madriparite to the, on the oral surface. And uh, arms with... Uh, Highly articulated uh, vertebrae because it is highly movable, flexible arms. Okay, so that is also a very important feature that is madriparite, it is on the oral surface in the case of ophiroidea. Okay, then asteroidea, what has happened? Uh, it is a little ancient to the ophiroidea, and even though uh, we can see that uh, they are uh, ancient to many characters are common, like they have suckers. Uh, uh, like, uh, sorry, what do you call, they have podia, they have uh, uh, attachment uh, to substratum by ball surface. So, all these characters you can find it in this case of this one, crinoid. Okay. So, this particular uh, figure, it shows the characters as well as uh, how ancient each group it is. Okay, so among the echinodermata, it is a crinoidea. Among the living echinodermata, the crinoidea includes the most ancient or the most primitive of the uh, living echinoderms. Okay, and they, it is found that the fossil record, it extends back to the early Cambrian, that is almost like 570 million years ago. 
okay now uh, so that is about the classification of uh, the uh, phylum echinodermata so we will conclude that phylum echinodermata it is divided into three subphyla the uh, subphylum crinozoa it includes the class crinoidea subphylum asprozoa includes classes of eroidea and astroidea subphylum echinozoa includes classes echinoidea and holothuroidea okay so this is about the classification of the phylum uh, echinodermata thank you